Hey there. My name is, oh, let me remove my mask. My name is Greg Gazel, and I am the preservation supervisor here at Mount Auburn. Right now we are in the preservation shop, and as you can see, the door is open, the weather is nice, and we are ramping up for what we uh, anticipate will be a busy year. Today, in celebration of Preservation Month, the month of May, we are going to check out a side hill tomb. But first, we have to go get the key. Come on along. Mount Auburn's collection of side hill tombs vary greatly. Here are a few examples. As you can see here, they can be quite small with just barely enough room to access, or they can be grand. This brownstone sign hill tomb allows for people to enter to easily pay their respects. Here's a combination granite and marble facade. Behind the iron door, you might find a stairwell that descends eight or 10 feet. Notice the obelisk situated right on top. It's a nice touch. You can find this cluster of side hill tombs near our main entrance at the Ace of Grey Garden. This granite side hill tomb faces Consecration Dell. This is an example of the whole tomb fully engaged in the hillside. And here is another that is partly engaged in the hillside. This one has some brand new plantings on its roof. Some tombs are active and accessible by family to this day, but some are closed for business, most likely forever. They could be full, neglected, or have some other issue that doesn't allow for access anymore. Our best side hill tomb neighborhood, in my opinion, just might be in Hazel Dell, where you can see here the tombs are cut into Indian Ridge Path. From up on that path, you can get a great look at the earthen or living roofs. Time to go grab that key. It's important to know where the keys are at all times and keep them organized. This is definitely behind the scenes. All right, this is where we keep all of the keys to all of the tombs here at Mount Auburn. Now to find it. Where is it, where is it? Oh, there it is. As we enter, you can see the granite entryway where a loved one would occupy while paying respects to a deceased relative. Each family would have a key and have access whenever the cemetery was open. Here is the keyhole. As you can see, this little cross is used to protect the lockworks from the elements. Normally, there would be a crypt wall. This is an example of a single crypt space. If you pull back, you would normally see a wall full of crypts like this. However, in this instance, the cemetery used this as a receiving tomb. The crypt facade and the inner structure have been removed, revealing the barrel or tunnel vault design. Looking at the back wall, you can see the ghost marks of where each crypt was. A barrel vault ceiling is a self-supporting arched form semicircular circular in shape. During construction, timber forms would have been used to create the arch, as in this example. As you see, the ceiling is connected to the walls, which are connected to the foundation. But because of the weight of the earth above, there is a huge amount of downward and outward force happening. On above ground buildings, you would see buttresses or flying buttresses to counteract that outward force. The earth on the other side of these walls gives all the opposing resistance needed. Considering the fine condition of this vaulted ceiling, the opposing forces seem to be working in harmony, but we'll be sure to check back periodically. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Behind the Scenes at Mount Auburn Cemetery in celebra celebration of Preservation Month, the month of May. Stay tuned for some more videos from us in the preservation department. See you later.